Good morning. Today I get to show you something about segment addition. It's a pretty simple thing, but it gives us a chance to work on solving equations, writing equations and solving them. It's been a while since most of us, most of us have done some algebra. Let's begin. It'll work like this. You'll make a sketch, you'll write an equation and solve it, and you'll find some lengths of some segments. The very first question comes up this way. This is from a page that is printed and available to you at Canvas. You don't have to download it, you could just watch the video, but I think it would probably be best if you looked at that, at that printed page as well, called Segment Edition. It tells me that point Z is somewhere between A and B. I'll make that sketch, showing a point Z somewhere between A and B. It also tells me that AZ is X plus 3. Further, that ZB is 2X. And the full length, AB, is 30. As I think about this, it's pretty clear to me that this length plus this length must add up to the full length. So, I have a quick equation to write. X plus 3 increased by twice X, 2X, is equal to 30. I think you're probably pretty good at this kind of equation, but let's talk about what we should do to solve it. We should gather like terms. This 1x and 2x gives me 3x plus 3 equals to 30. We should isolate the variable. We'll do that by adding and subtracting first. I'll subtract 3x from both sides, leaving 3x equal to 27. Divide both sides by 3, and I see that x is equal to 9. You can write more, but you don't have to write more. And if x is equal to 9, I'm not quite finished. I should show the lengths of these various segments. AZ. If x is truly 9, 9 plus 3 has got to be 12. And zb, if x is 9, zb must be 2 times 9, therefore 18. And me, I'm happy, because I see that 8, 12 and 18 adds up to the full length of 30. So I'm working this as it should be done. That's the kind of thing we should do with every question. They might get a little more interesting. Let's check that out. Next case says q is between p and r. I'll show a point Q somewhere between P and R. Just somewhere Q between P and R. What more must I know? PQ is 2x plus 1. QR is 6x plus 3. While PR is 60. Pretty much the same setup as last time. These two smaller lengths will add up to the full length. Let's write an equation and solve it. 2x plus 1. You don't need parentheses around this, but it might be helpful. Plus 6x plus 3. The length of QR is equal to the full length of 60. Let's gather like terms. 8x. And the 1 and 3 give me plus 4. Equals 60. As we isolate the variable, we'll take care of adding and subtracting first. Subtract 4 from both sides, leaving 8x equal to 56. Dividing both sides by 8, I'm convinced that x is equal to 7. Now let's see what that does for us if x is equal to 7. I'm not quite finished yet. What would be the length of PQ? If x is truly 7, 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1, PQ would be 15. And then QR? If x were 7, 6 times 7 is 42, plus 3 would be 45. And now I'm happy and I think it's completely solved. These two lengths, 15 and 45 add up to 60, so it's appropriate and that's the way we should do it. Let's, let's do a couple more, please. On the third case, I'm told that B is between A and C. I'll make such a, case, such a sketch. Showing a point B somewhere, don't know where, between A and C, somewhere along that segment. And in this case, I'm told that AB is 2x plus 1, BC is 3x plus 2, while AC is 2x plus 30, with a little correction there. 2x plus 30. Now, Again, we're aware that these two smaller lengths must add up to the full length, but it's a little bit more interesting equation. Still workable. 2x plus 1 plus 
3x plus 2 must equal the full length 2x plus 30. Don't really need the equations, but it helps me to think this through. I'll gather like terms on the left-hand member to the everything left of this equal sign. And that would give me 5x plus 3 is equal to 2x plus 30. Now this is a little bit of an interesting place. I got a 5x here and a 2x there. Should I call that 7x? And no, that's not how this could work. Because the 2x and the 5x are on opposite sides of the equal sign, I should subtract 5x from both, excuse me, subtract the smaller one, subtract 2x from both sides. If I were to do that, subtracting 2x from both sides, I'd have 3x plus 3 is equal to 30. Subtract 3 from both sides, and I have 3x is equal to 27. Dividing both sides by 3, I'm convinced that x is equal to 9. Not quite finished. Let's go find the lengths of those three segments, segments and see if they add up like they should. AB. If x is truly 9, 2 times 9 is 18 plus 1. That's got to be 19. And BC? BC, if x is truly 9, 3 times 9 is 27 plus 2 would be 29. And then looking for the length of AC. X being 9, so 2 times 9 is 18 plus 30 would be 48. I'm pleased. I see that 19 for this length and 29 for that length adds up to 48. So I'm happy with that one and I'm on to the next question. Let's see how it goes. I'm told here that point N is between points M and O. I'll make such a sketch. It's important that you make the sketch every time. Point N between points M and O. I'll show it there. MN is X plus 2. MO, oh, wow. MO is the full length, isn't it? MO is 4X minus 16. And NO is 2X minus 8. If we have a good sketch, it's easy to write the good equation. Let's write the equation that fits. The two smaller lengths add up to the full length. Here we go. So x plus 2 plus 2x minus 8 adds up to 4x minus 16. Gather like terms on the left-hand number, giving me 3x a positive 2 and a negative 8 minus 6 equals 4x minus 16. As we think what will happen next, I can't put these together. I, calling that 7x, I should subtract the smaller, the 3x from both sides. When I subtract 3x from both sides, on the left-hand member, I'm left with negative 6. Subtract 3x from 4x, I'm left with 1x minus 16. As we isolate the variable x, I would add 16 to both sides. When I add 16 to both sides, a negative 6 plus 16 leaves me with 10. Add 16 to this side, and I'm just left with x, 1x. I'm convinced that x is equal to 10. But let me check this. Let me find the lengths of those three segments. Mn. If x is truly 10, 10 plus 2 has got to be 12. And no. x being 10, 2 times 10, 20, minus 8 would have been 12 again. Hmm, and MO, if X is 10, 4 times 10 is 40, minus 16 would be 24. I'm pleased. A couple of things are happening here. It's true that this could be 12, and this could be 12, and the whole thing be 24. does add up correctly. But there's this little blurb that says, is there a midpoint? And I bet you see that that's true. If MN is 12, and NO is 12, and this point is right in the middle. And in fact, yes, I would report N is the midpoint of segment MO. We have a midpoint. On that page, there's only those four printed problems, but I would like to bring you a better question. Let's do one with a quadratic. I think you'll find it much more interesting. Let's play. I'll make the sketch and read it to you. In this case, you're told that P is between A and B. Let's just show a segment with some point P 
put it there between segment points A and B. Given lots of data here, AP is x squared plus 4. PB is 3x plus 2. Well, AB is 10x, the full length across there, AB being 10x. It is clear to most of us, I'm sure, that this small length, x plus 4, plus this small length, 3x plus 2, must equal the full length, 10x. Let's write the equation and see what we should do to solve it. It would look like this. x squared plus 4 plus 3x plus 2 must equal 10x. should collect like terms. That would just be x squared. The 3x stays. And this positive 4 and this positive 2 yielding a positive 6 equal is 10x. What should we do now? And whenever we're solving our quadratic equation, you'll always set it equal to 0 first. No matter how you're going to do it, quadratic formula or factoring. Although in my class, you'll be able to solve every quadratic by factoring. We should set this equal to zero. I'm going to bring everything to the left-hand side. I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides. I'll subtract 10x from this 3x. When I do so, it becomes x squared minus 7x plus 6 is equal to zero. And I say to you again, every quadratic that we work in your geometry class will be solved by factoring. You could use the quadratic formula, but I think this would be a better method. I'll set out a couple of factors. Here's what I know for sure. The factors of the leading term, x squared, must fall here and here. That's got to be true, as if we were to multiply these binomials. And the factors of the 6 will have to fall here and here. The factors of 6 could be 6 and 1, could be 3 and 2. By virtue of the middle term being 7, I've got to use the 6 and 1. I'm going to put a 6 here and a 1 here. I'm also thinking when I multiply that 6 times that 1, I get a positive 6. So they're, either they're both positive or they're both negative. Because the middle term is negative, I think that they're both negative. If you were to carefully multiply these two binomials, you would get this quadratic back again. x squared, sure. Negative 1 and negative 6 give me that negative 7x. Last times last a positive 6. So it is factored correctly. What should we do now? Here's an important idea. If the product of two factors is equal to zero, then one of those factors must be zero. Let's set the two factors equal to zero and see what comes. So x minus 6 could be equal to zero, or x minus 1 could be equal to zero. Solving those little wimpy equations, x is either equal to 6, adding 6 to both sides, or x is equal to 1. Every quadratic equation pretty much has two roots. We have two roots. Let's investigate them both, see if they're both valid. Sometimes you find what's called an erroneous root that is not valid. Well, let's work with this one. x equal to 6. If x were truly 6, then what would AP have been? And 6 squared is 36 plus 4 would be 40. And PB? 3 times 6 is 18 plus 2 would be 20. And AB? If, a, if x is 6, then ab is 10x, 10 times 6 would be 60. And I'm happy with that. A length of 40, a length of 20, and a length of 60. It's not drawn to scale, but that's okay with me. They add up correctly. x equal to 6 is a valid root. But let's look further. What if x were equal to 1? Let's investigate that too as well. If x were equal to 1, what about the length of ap? If x were 1, 1 squared is just 1, and 1 plus 4 is 5. PB, 3 times 1, just letting x be 1 this time, 3 times 1, just 3, plus 2 would be 5 again. Okay, well what about AB? Well, if x is 1, AB 10 times 1 just got to be 10. 
They, they do add up correctly. This could be five, and this could be five, and the whole thing could be 10. And you might make a note on this one, by golly, P under, if X were equal to one with these lengths, it's clear to me that P is the midpoint of segment AB. That's the kind of thing work you've got to do today. There's a, a, a pro, uh, an assignment for you called practice with segment addition. Do that beautifully. Work it showing the, the equation, how you solve it, and the lengths of the various segments and then take a careful picture with it, putting it flat, taking a picture from above on, and, and submitting it to me at Canvas. Thank you very much. Happy with you. Proud of you. Look forward to seeing you soon.